Good Sunday morning to you. This is Get Your Love on Radio here on Remnant Radio 100.1 FM. What a what an awesome song. Keep Your Love On. That's by Gabriel Bueller. It's a joy to be able to sit in this uh, radio studio and listen to that song and know that every word was written under the anointing of God Almighty. And this show is dedicated to the family of faith around the globe. And we have an abundant resources to bless you and increase your faith, heal your heart, and set you on a course of rich blessings, all available at getyourloveon.org, all carefully put together under the anointing of God Almighty. It's a beautiful thing. And today you're going to hear a lot about all of those resources and that beautiful, rich, blessed life, a life of faith. Now, our team of ministers and faithful prayer warriors, all part of the Get Your Love On team, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers have incredibly, my beloved friends, this is so wondrous, they have made themselves available for our growth and our instruction, for our perfection. And I'd like to take a moment and let you in on the miraculous work of God that it was to put this word on these airwaves right now that are in your ears and blessing your soul. It started many decades ago when one man chose to simply believe God for all of his promises and believe that God is who he says he is. And this man, Brother Bob, he's my spiritual grandfather and you've heard him on this show many times. He's a true apostle and he lived, he's now gone on to be with the Lord, but he lived with every breath with that purpose to showcase the true, uncompromised Word of God and to teach people that God is who He says He is. And then he met the woman who loved him and who loved God with all her heart and all her strength. And once that happened, this was, again, decades ago, once that happened, and for any man who's ever met the right one, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That's when life really takes off. Well, their life in Jesus Christ, Brother Bob and his wife, Carol, who you've also heard on this show many times, their ministry took off to spiritual heights that these generations had not seen. And it required incredible stances. It required incredible strength, incredible sacrifice, and a depth and love for the human soul uh, that comes just from your guts. It came from their guts. And it took immense patience and care and faith. And the good news is the reason you're hearing this right now is because God supplied all that to them and they just gave it out. Isn't that beautiful? Why? Because they had had and have true charity. And that's why, again, you're hearing this today. And my heart just rejoices to share this knowledge and truth with you (laughs) and to let you know this is very personal. This is a message from God himself that your soul is cherished, understood, and important. So much so that God began a work in this land decades ago to launch this platform, reach your ears, and pour out his great love and wisdom to you and to each one of us. So we can't take it lightly. And I hope that helps us all understand the magnitude and importance of this word. And I hope we'll all share it with with others, all those we love. Let's share this because it is with true charity that it, it has been put on these airwaves. And it's a true love feast with God Almighty. And that's what charity is. It's a love feast. So let's let's talk about that. Let's get to some true charity because as it says in the word, that's what really matters. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Apostle Paul says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. If we don't have charity in our words, then whatever we're saying, it's, it's just noise. And it's hard to hear kind of noise, too. So that, that charity is the key to our words 
having impact. Isn't that incredible? And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Beloved friends, charity, again, it means love feast. It's the word agape. It means love in action. Well, God is love. So all action, as Paul just outlined, means nothing if God isn't in it. Without charity, all the knowledge, all the faith, all the mysteries, all the understanding means nothing. So that phrase, you'll often hear just in general discourse, you know, have faith in yourself, believe in yourself. <laughs> Without God, those words mean nothing. We need God in order in our lives and, and that true charity, that true understanding of God in order for, the, for faith to mean anything. Isn't that incredible? Good news is we're getting God in the center of our lives. As we hear his word, as we walk in his ways, that makes our life effective. So I love how Paul draws this contrast and it's very stark. It's very strong. What he's saying, this is profound. And again, this is why I, I wanted everyone to know the, the miraculous work of God for generations to get this word out because it is so profound. And it is the very difference between having a meaningless life and having an eternally meaningful life. Isn't that wonderful that we're getting this today? Thank you, Lord. In verse three, it says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. That's right. Through charity, through the true love of God acting in us and through us, no one's going to be seeking accolades or false pretenses, all those religious practices of false humility and self-inflicting wounds. Mm -mm, not necessary. Nope. No one will be comparing themselves among themselves. That's, that's envy. Nope. Not necessary. Not when we have the true love of God. Not when it's real. Not when there's a feast of God in our life. Through charity, we get to reverence God and know how to feed the poor and the proper way to put ourselves into the work of the Lord. And I've got a hint, it won't burn you out. So that's how we get to know what God's really doing in our life through charity, that love feast, love in action. Here's verse five. It says, speaking of charity, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. That's right. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. That feast of love, that feast of God gives us hope. It helps us bear and endure all things. So as we're going through difficult times in our life, as we focus on that feast of love, that charity, that knowing God and having that beautiful exchange with him, those things, quote unquote, I love that, hopeth all things, endureth all things. They just become things. As we focus on the Lord, everything else just becomes things <laughs> and are null and void. Why? Because charity gives us that hope, gives us that endurance, and gives us that ability to bear all things through charity. Here's why. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. The more we give out our love, that real charity, love in action, and how we love the Lord, that love feast with the Lord, everything else passes away, but that 
lives on eternally. And God's ways are perfect. So as we seek him, feasting on his word, learning his ways, that allows us to do away with all the imperfect things in life, all the pain of the past, all the habits of the past, all the ways we understood things. Nope. Those get to be done away. It says shall be done away because they aren't of God. So they shall be done away. And we get to grow into that perfect man or woman of God. Isn't that wonderful? This is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. It says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now, children often, they have a tough time focusing, right? And they're easily distracted, as we all know. When something com new comes along, they're, oh, that's, that's what they want now. And we get to put that away and just want God. And you're going to hear our beloved friend Trish today. Uh, she has an incredible message on the shield of faith. And years and years and years ago, she gave me some of the best advice I've ever had in my life. She said, hon, You've got to want God more than anything. And that hit me. Wow. Wanting God more than anything. When we do, we will put away those childish things. And we will become a true man and woman of God by putting away those childish things. When we want God more than anything, we will succeed. Now, another thing about children is that when they do tend to focus, this is so um, incredible, especially if you have children in your life, when they do focus, it's usually on playing and it can be difficult for them to focus on what they actually need to do, like eat dinner. So by putting away those childish things, when we grow up in the Lord, it's learning how to focus on the things of God, not the world putting away the play toys and enjoying that love feast with God Almighty. That's what it is to put away those childish things. Some other th childish things that we get to put away when we become that true man and woman of God, the false activity of the world, the rushing to and from all the busyness. Nope. We get to put that away. We get to put away the worry of an obligation to things that have nothing to do with our walk with the Lord. And you're going to hear about that momentarily. We have another beautiful minister. His name's Corey. You're going to hear about that as well. How to, how to put aside all those heavy handed obligations that the world would try to convince you are important. God says we're putting away those childish things. We get to seek God to know when to engage and when to leave off. We just get to say, Hey Lord, is this, is this of you? Is this something you have for me? And then he'll say yes or no. And then we get to move forward in that. It's just that simple. We get to seek God for that. You know, and many times too, and I'm sure a, a lot of you will, oh yeah, that's true, <laughs> this one. A lot of times that true charity, that love in action, it means simply being in fervent prayer. And our action is actually staying out of God's way because he knows how to get his work done. So our prayers will accomplish great work. We don't have to be necessarily actively doing something, but actively praying for that something will create God's activity. And that's one of the most charitable things we can do too, is love someone so much to keep them in our fervent prayers. Lord, we need this person to come through. I need my son to come through. I need my daughter to gain this understanding, Lord. And that prayer does the work. That fervency, that's real love in action. My wonderful friends, the Lord knows how to get his work done. So we're not to compare ourselves with anyone else. We are individuals before God. And we are part of a glorious, wondrous body working together. And I found this really interesting when I was studying out charity that before Apostle Paul taught on charity in chapter 13, we just went through, in chapter 12, he taught about the body of Christ. <laughs> because we need each other. We need each other. 
to be able to accomplish God's work. Isn't that wonderful? To be able to understand that true charity. We need one another. So let's, let's go to 1 Corinthians 12, and we'll start in verse 12. It says, For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Whether we are ba- When we are baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, and God is very specific about this, about how to do it and why we do it, it's not, it's not a ceremony. It's very real and it's very significant to God Almighty. There's really good reasons for him to be very specific about this, and it's outlined in part by the specificity that Paul is outlining here. We are to be part of that one body of Christ. So we are to be part of that one baptism. And it's unity. And we have all of that information for you at getyourloveon.org. We have some beautiful Bible studies that will outline, okay, this is is what baptism really means. It gives perfect understanding. And then if you'd like to get baptized, if you haven't been baptized and you'd like to get baptized, or if you have been baptized and you, you read this Bible study and say, wait, wait a minute. I have the baptism of John, not the baptism of Jesus Christ. I need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth for the remission of sins. Reach out to us. Let us know. We will help you. We're here for you. So reach out to us. Go to getyourloveon.org for that study, that Bible study, and that perfect knowledge. And then if you um, would like to get baptized, we rejoice in that. Reach out to us. We'll be there for you. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 12, chapter 14 now. It says, I'm sorry, chapter 12, verse 14. It says, For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I'm not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an ear, where were the hearing? And if the whole hearing were the smelling. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. Isn't that wonderful? That, that again is why the word says, whosoever compares themselves among themselves are not wise. It's because we're part of a body. And so every individual has their place and has their purpose in the body of Christ. And we get to trust God that he has put us exactly where he needs us because it pleases him. And as we seek him, he will give us more understanding as to our place in the body of Christ. Isn't that wonderful? And the Lord was just showing me there's, there's some souls that feel like they're not doing enough or they're not doing their part. or That is not of God. Reject that thought. As we walk forward in faith, and again, we're going to hear about incredible faith today. As we walk forward in great faith of God, we are doing our part. We are. And we get to take on whatever the Lord has for us individually. And it's a, it's a day by day walk. It's not something that, that you try to run after on your own will. It's just letting the Lord do it in our life and trusting him because now he hath set the members, everyone in the body, as it hath pleased him. So have that faith and say, Lord, strengthen my faith. Lord, show me that I'm, put me where you want me and show me, show me, Lord, that you've got me exactly where you want me. And he will. As we seek God, he'll show us where to go and how to show our love and true charity and do the things that are pleasing to him. And you're, again, you're going to hear more on that today. It's a really, we have some exceptional ministers today. Verse 19, and if they were all one member, (laughs) where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. Isn't that interesting, though, that Apostle Paul used the word seem? to be more feeble. 
because through any weakness, we are made strong in Christ. And oftentimes the Lord in his great wisdom will have us seem feeble and need some help. So another member of the body can showcase that true charity. And it's a beautiful working of the Lord. It's so magnificent. So again, we needn't compare ourselves to anyone else. We are individuals before God Almighty. You, you look and you talk to God directly and he will show you your place. He will show you how important you are in the beautiful body of Christ. Verse 23, and those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow mo more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which lacked. Now this is the opposite of the world, because the world's ways are opposing God. That's, that's the way of the world, is to try to oppose God. And that's why we're to put those ways away. That's why we reject and put away those childish things. That's the way of the world, petty and childish. And, and the way of the world can't see the grandeur of God's work. So yeah, let's put all of that away and let's see what God's doing because it is miraculous and it is wondrous. Here's verse 25. It says that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. You're going to hear more about that today as well. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversity of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak good tongues? Do all interpret? This is a wonderful question. Again, Paul is saying, we all have our role. We all have our part. Here it is, verse 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Well, that more excellent way is through charity, and it is love in action. God Almighty, knowing his word, spending time with him, learning of him. And that's what we do here on Get Your Love On Radio. We teach the Word of God in its simplicity and truth. And we have a wonderful team that have put together an exceptional video series on YouTube. And the, our team, diligent, prayerful friends that seek God to do so. Now, regardless of if you've just discovered Jesus Christ or if you've been in church your whole life, uh, these videos, this video series is incredible teaching and um, puts God's word into real life applications. We get a lot of comments on it, basically summed up as this finally makes sense. <laughs> and it's true. So if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, now's a really good time to create a new tab in your browser and go to radioremnant.org and stream the rest of the audio of the show right there. We don't want you to miss out. Here's a sample of this teaching that's available on our YouTube channel and at getyourloveon.org. This again is from a series on the Sermon on the Mount from a minister, our friend Corey, who loves the Lord and loves the human soul and who, you know, has really waited his entire life for the opportunity to share the good things that God has shown him. So he's doing that today. Now, this is part 17, okay? And it's incredible. You're going to want to go back and review parts 1 through 16. But here's part 17 of the video series of the Sermon on the Mount. Now, a church that forbids divorce 